and a bit more. I can I can hear you. You got a little bit, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was. You also turned on your camera. We're not that kind of show. <laughs> Right, let's see here. I mean, I can show you mine, but it ain't going to be near as pretty as yours. In fact, mine is a total catastrophe at the moment. Um, let's share my screen. Like, that's my setup right now. <laughs> What's that? It's a pretty, I mean, <clears throat> it ain't good. Let's put a, <laughs> uh, Also, my camera's all messed up. Wow, that that's a catastrophe. <laughs> it's the last time I try and record a thing for someone. Someone's like, hey, can you rec make this special video for me? And I'm like, you do realize that I don't do video, right? Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the lazy master of the static image that lasts for however many hours it takes. And he's like, no, it's fine. Yes, I know. Well, we can actually get into that, because that'd be a really good thing to kind of lead off with. Yeah, we've been recording for the last three minutes. It's fine. <laughs> That's a minute and a half, but still. Um, ah, I, like, just came in. So I totally... saying I totally did not just unhook my gun. <laughs> No. <laughs> I have mutton chops. Is this is this like new information to you? So it's it's kind of a funny story how that happened. Um, I sent you the COVID beard picture. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, and then I think I sent you the picture that came after that, like after I shaved. After I shaved it off. No, no, where I, I just I just shaved my mustache and I shaved this part so I had like nice big full bushy mutton chops. Um because my pastor recommended, didn't tell me to, but he strongly recommended that just for in terms of um uh what's the word? Decorum and acceptance of the broader Christian community that we're part of, beards aren't really looked on very fondly. And so I shaved off my mustache and right here, and my beard was gone. And he didn't think that was nearly as funny as I did, but I still think it was pretty good. Um, let me see if I can actually find this. People on uh, who are tuning in, you won't see this or anything else that we're talking about right now, but you get the kind of I just so it's like like halfway there. Keeping them even is the hardest part. But I have a decent trimmer, so it works out all right. Yes. Mm hmm. Right. Mm hmm. So, I mean, mine, mine, mine were long. Like, I had some volume there. Uh, I actually trim these back every couple of weeks, um, so they're not quite as uh, bushy. Um, because I, I am still trying to maintain some level of, of decorum, although less and less so all the time. I'm, uh, I'm not a rebel. But I do enjoy causing trouble. Um, where is this? Why is that? The pictures on my phone that come up. That makes zero sense whatsoever. <sighs> Why can't I just stare this to Discord like you normally can? Word. I mean, I could just send it to you, send it to you via the phone. <laughs> could do that. That's no fun. There we are. 
That's that's what we went to. Yeah, I figured I'd, I'd sent that to you. Oh, Agent Callus. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a good thought. I appreciate that thought. Agent Callus is probably my. F I mean, Thrawn is hard to beat because I'm an old Thrawn fan, going back to the. 90s when I first discovered Star Wars and started reading all the books and Timothy Zahn's Heir to the Empire trilogy is absolutely amazing and if you haven't read it you should um, even though it's technically not canon anymore although it's way better than any canon we've gotten since then but that's a whole other story um, always he wrote that in like the late 80s just <clears throat> premiere anyway um, but uh, in, in Rebels uh, Agent Callus was my favorite character until Thrawn throwed up. Then I'm like, yeah, Thrawn, <laughs> Mithran Nudro. Wow, I flubbed that really badly. Can you tell that I've had a very long day? <laughs> um, how so? Mm hmm Gotcha. Yes. Mm hmm Right. I mean, I'm not saying that you're telling you it's a disaster. I'm just agreeing with what you're saying. I'm walking along here. Mm hmm. Okay. Wow. That's... I mean, still, that's awesome. Oh, the things that I could do if I had... The, thing, the things if I had... Things I could do if I had that much space. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm Yep. Gotcha. Pivot. Pivot. <laughs> mhm. Mm yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Gotcha. Okay. I 
I'm just, I'm just gonna throw this out here. In, in terms of like words you're saying that could be misappropriated, like that is a wonderful string of words, and I really appreciate where my mind went with that. Although that was not at all what you were talking about. So. <laughs> You kind of have to go back and listen to it with a dirtier mind. <laughs> I'm sure Sass will, will educate us in the comments down below. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Mm hmm Uh-huh. Yeah. The scratches. Yeah. I I know that feeling, and it's not well for me. It's not going to be there for a year. Um, so I moved in here like nine months ago, a little less than that, maybe more. I don't I don't know what time. I don't know what day. Ten months, something like that. Anyway, uh, and that's not the important part. Um, so when I moved in here, my roommate's over there. The assumption was that within like you know six months or so, his wife was going to be coming here. And then they were either, I was going to move out or they were going to move out. And so I let him have the big room, all kinds of stuff, despite the fact that I was paying more. And doing all, like, I was like, you know, I'm just going to let you guys have this one. I'm going to be very temporary. I'm going to get out. The thing that wasn't very temporary about me moving in here was what I do with my dresser. You have to have a place to hold your clothes, right? Well, the dresser that I have is, well, that, since we can do this, um, let me take this up here. Um, it is in my closet. Oh yeah, and I can only imagine how much more fun it's going to be to get it back out, because which I'm assuming is going to be none at all. <laughs> but, um, it fits in there with like a half an inch of to spare. I can get the doors closed. I can get the doors closed. I, I am not looking forward to pulling it back out of there. And it's like, I'm less than two months away. I'm pulling it back out of there soon. Although that's probably not as bad as my uh, roommate's couch, which we're going to have to deal with too. I think uh, my pastor, I think, just sold it online somewhere. Someone's going to come get it eventually. I don't know when. <laughs> Someone should probably tell me these things. I live here. <laughs> but, but, uh, well, that, that's not going to happen because I got the key. Um, I'm like, someone's... Someone's... I mean, they could climb in the balcony. It's probably the best point of entry, but good luck on that. Neighbor's dog down below is vicious. It's only, it's only like eight pounds, but it's still vicious. <laughs> also, I think I have a new neighbor down there. The dog is new, and they sing. Like really loud, sometimes on key. <laughs> sometimes it might be <laughs> not at all because they they're singing when I'm trying to sleep and I'm sitting with probably when they're trying to sleep or something to that effect. Um, <laughs> total opposites. Um, by the way, since we have this opportunity, fantastic shirt, fantastic, Mister Incredible. It's that's 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 beautiful. I also see Figment there in the background. Excellent as well. Jeshar, yes. Yep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And a Rubik's Cube with. Mm hmm. Uh huh. My light super is right there. And your switch. Hmm. We should place.
Uh, well, you, you have a friend with a 3D printer who might be able to print you a switch stand. Because sometimes you want to stand like this. So, so my TV and everything is out in the other room. But all of my audio equipment and everything is in here. So if, if I'm going to play my Switch with other people online, like, actually more conducive to play it back here, even if it is, whoop, on the floor. <laughs> even if it is um, a much smaller screen. So, you know, I'll sit here and I have my little Switch set up here and I'll just be playing away on it. And yes, I know, it does have the stand down here. I, I do, I'm, I am aware of that. But, I mean, look at how flimsy this is. Like, I understand, it's, it's probably adequate, but why go with adequate when you could have extraordinary? And it cost me literally a dollar, probably less. Eh, I actually, need, I actually do need to get my printer fixed. I, th I think the belt is skipping. I'm having some layer shift issues. And sometimes it makes a horrifically bad noise, and then the layer shift can get really bad. I'm thinking it's a belt issue, but I haven't done the uh, the research yet to figure out how to fix it. But right now, it's kind of out of commission because the layer shifting is really bad. Like it's some shifting over like an inch, and when you're printing parts that are like this big, less like a foot or less, yeah, an inch is big. Really, really a problem. I'm learning a lot about measurements now that I'm working at a glass factory. I should not be freezing. Here, let me fix try and this. Hello, masters. I can hear you. This is the, always the case when I call down to Alabama. I can always hear you folks, but you can never hear me. So I'm not sure whose side it is that is having issues. If it's you folks or if it's me. Always. Just a point of frustration. Now you're frozen. You can probably hear me now, and I can't hear you. Because you flopped our free. You have a very confused look on your face as you sit there completely motionless. And now I'm motionless. My internet probably just went out. It's wonderful. Why did my internet just go out? <sighs> I love troubleshooting in the middle of a podcast. It's the best. Isn't it, Sass? Just absolutely glorious. Maybe someday in the future, it will just work. It's secured. Right, there we go. That seems to have fixed it. Hello. Masters, I can see you, but can I hear you? I can hear you, yes, yes. I don't know. My internet was fully functioning. It says everything's great. Everything stopped working. So I'm like, let's just restart it. And hey, what do you know? It worked. <laughs> I don't understand what's happening, man. I just, I just want it to work. I just, I just want to plug things in and they work. It's right. Is this too much to ask? You just want stuff to work. Oh. Hmm. Well, I was looking to see about a story. Okay. And I opened Twitter to, to try and find it. And trending right now is R.I.P. Sebastian Stan. And I'm like, uh, I hope he's not dead. The MCU is going to have a lot of problems if they keep losing heroes. Um... Uh, 
It does not look as though he's actually dead. I don't know how this started. Pass the time. This is craziness. Anyway, it does not appear as though he's dead. Um, yes. Sebastian Stan is not dead confirmed for today. Tomorrow is another day, but today. It, restart, start recasting everybody. <laughs> uh, um, all right, let's get off Twitter before I start going into the file cesspool, which is my Twitter. <laughs> I I identify my Twitter as a file cesspool. I know and don't know. Because they ask me like, because it, it's this is 2021. People always ask, well, what what social media are you on? You on Facebook? I'm like, no, I'm not on Facebook. I don't want to have anything to do with Facebook. This, that, and the other. And the, well, what do you want? I'm like, well, I have a Twitter, but you don't want to follow me on Twitter. Why? Why do I not want to follow you on Twitter? Well, it's a it's a pretty vile cesspool. <laughs> it, it is not premium content. <laughs> Nothing that I okay. Let's let's just back this up. Nothing that I put on the internet is premium content. Are you looking up what I posted today? I uh, know, I know you did, but I mean, that doesn't mean you can't look at. It. <laughs> you did, yes, several months ago, appropriately so. Oh yeah, the cannon was was. I got home, and that was just there, and I was like, oh, well, hello there. Uh I I like cannon. I don't understand what's going on with cannon, but cannon is cool. And it goes boom. And apparently it's a lot louder than they thought it was going to be. Um, so yeah. Yes. Yes. D and D show. I I I have been thinking about this, and I do. I'm gonna try this week to try and get my E3D printer back up and running properly. Um, because I'm we're gonna do a show. We gotta do it up big, right? So I might print myself some uh, passable looking arm, something like that, or something completely ridiculous just for the fun of it. Probably more the second one. <laughs> Uh Huh. No. I'm I'm done. <laughs> I, I walked into Kroger today and I, I walked over I walked straight over to the stuff I need to get and I got it. Walked to the checkout, walked out and I'm like, you know what? It was it was absolutely worth getting the vaccine so I don't have to wear a stupid mask anymore. <laughs> Signs are vaccinated people don't have to wear a mask. I'm like, okay, I'm vaccinated. I'm I'm good. I, I'm I'm so done with the mask. It was it was hot and uncomfortable when I was doing it for for fun, and then it became a whole lot less fun, and then it became even more or less fun, and then it became even more or less fun. Yeah, uh, you get the point. Um, now that doesn't mean that I'm not going to get like some sort of like actually. Uh, so, what I could do <laughs> is I could make like a night helmet, but have like you know the slits and stuff in, in the front so that it would be um, breathable. That could be, and then there's like you just see like my eyes coming out the top there. That could be kind of fun. Um, that's a very involved print and probably not going to happen, particularly because of the fact that right now my printer is not working. I 
I still have to get it working before I can do any of that stuff, but it still could be could be interesting. Um, although that would probably depend on how I want to play my character, which I haven't decided on yet. I I have I have a lot of ideas on what I want to do, but <laughs> yes. Well, okay, so the first thing that occurred to me was like, oh, I should make him a dwarf hybrid, which you are signed off on already, dwarfling, um, which is a... I I have more about his per personal backstory and growing up than I have anything else. <laughs> I don't know what class he is. I don't know what he does. I don't know... Okay, well, I do kind of know, like, what he does. Um. So my thing is, like, so... Something happened in the time past. What it was, not particularly all that important. And there was this rough, tough kind of dwarvish woman. Right? Like Lord of the Rings dwarvish woman where, uh, you know, <clears throat> people here don't really believe that there are dwarven women. They simply think that dwarves spot right up out of the ground. And then Aragorn's over there going, it's the beards. <laughs> um, kind of thing. Like a proper dwarvish woman. Um... <laughs> And uh, she, being the survivor of some grand campaign, is like stopped in a, in a tavern one night, and she uh, it's like has her money and her reward and everything, and she's going to settle down and find her find her forever home. And um, she gets to heavily drinking and heavily drinking and heavily drinking, as dwarves are prone to do. And she stumbles out into the night and sees a very uh, what she assumes in her drunken stupor is a very fetching half a ha half a dwarf, <laughs> and she picks him up and carries him home, <laughs> and uh, and that was in fact the halfling father who was much more mild mannered than she, um, and then love blossoms and does what love does, and and then there's this dwarfling running around, <laughs> who I'm sure is appropriately scarred by his up by his upbringing, um. Appropriately, so I have a couple thoughts on how I want to play him. Uh, I kind of want to do sort of the dumb yokel kind of thing, like he's lived a, like retired adventurer, army person, and then like this just farmer. And so when she order, notwithstanding, when she wed and bed him, <laughs> um. <laughs> You know, they were just kind of moved out on the farm because that's what he did, and she had money, and she didn't want to go adventure. She didn't think she had any more reason to go adventuring, or she just felt like, you know, we should be with my husband, kind of thing, um, and just follow whatever he's doing. She, she like, she has like this. I, I should just play her. <laughs> I have a lot of ideas about her. Very well, but I mean, the, it actually works out pretty well. Um, because you're saying you want like very minimal um, pre-existing stuff for, for the characters. So if I have everything for her, this guy is like literally a blank slate. He comes wandering in off the form probably just to do something. And like the group that was supposed to get together, like, well, he's stout. I've never seen a halfling like this before. Um, or I've never seen such a short dwarf, maybe... Ah, he could be a burglar. <laughs> but it was a good joke, right? Um, and he's kind of a dumb idiot, and he's just like, you know, I'll help out, sure. What can I do? And so, you know, everything then everything falls through like you've already set in your in your plot hook, and then, um, you know, he just kind of goes along with it. And in doing that, there's a character from a movie called paint your wagon who is someone I'm thinking about incorporating a lot of his characteristics into into uh, this fellow um, he's not one of the main characters he's, he shows up like towards the end of the film and he is a farmer who was traveling out out uh, out west in the um, settler days of the United States comes across a rough tough mining town called no name city and uh, promptly after arriving at No Name City and never having been taught about the less savory elements of the world, embrace them fully. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I, and and it's it's kind of it's kind of great because this this the character in in the in the movie Paint Your Wagon, um, he starts they he starts out as you know just kind of a big dumb guy and they have a the main characters have a plot to uh, kind of rip off the whole town of all the gold dust that's being used uh, as currency there. They're digging tunnels underneath the whole town to get under the floorboards and get the gold dust that falls through just because people are drunk and all kinds of stuff and they're tripping over themselves and spilling gold on the floor. Oh, well, strip it up, but it's also slipping through the cracks. And so they're making a mint and they needed a, you know, kind of a big strapping young lad to help them dig the tunnel. And while they're one of the mean characters, uh, Mr. Rumson, played by, uh, what's his name? Uh, might as well bring up the movie at this point because I'm already telling you the whole, or at least half the plot. Um, paint wagon? I can't remember, like very famous older actor, Lee Marvin. There we go. Um, played by Lee Marvin. He's just like the, the crusty old sourdough kind of guy. And just just one of the worst human beings on the planet. And he asked him, well, have you ever smoked? Well, no, I've never smoked. What do you mean you're never smoked? You're supposed to be a man, ain't you? Well, I, I guess so. I didn't realize that was like part of the qualifications. Well, here, have yourself a cigar. And start smoking on it. And, what do you like to drink? Well, I like well, I like water. Well, no, I, what, do you, what do you mean water? Well, yeah. And it goes down the whole thing. And he ends up getting involved in all manner of depravity. And then, like a month later, in the time frame of the story, this child kind of comes out to this young yokel's parents as Mr. Rumson is talking about all this kind of stuff and going off on this wild tangent that you kind of have to have a lot more context than I'm giving for. Um, I, I, like, I've left out the main point of the whole movie at this point, which is really funny. Um, I'm very proud of myself for not having actually spoiled the main plot. Um, like, everything started to come out. And they're like, you're not supposed to be around. You're, you're not going to hang around him anymore. Because you, you never know if he's going to get you involved in, you know, drinking or smoking. And he's like, I've I done those. What? What do you mean you've done those? Uh, what, what else could he do? Have you go to the ladies of ill repute? And he goes, oh, that's the best one. <laughs> and, uh, of course, his parents are just horrified. It's, it's great. So, you know, kind of have this completely naive idiot who just kind of stumbles through the world and just kind of does what people tell him to do. Um, he doesn't really qualify, in my opinion, as being like a rogue, not really even so much as a druid, because druids would be very intelligent about some things. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards fighter just because, you know, it's as basic as you can get. Um, he's not angry at anyone so he can't be a barbarian he's not on some sort of magical quest so he doesn't qualify as a paladin or a cleric he's not magical in any way so he's not a sorcerer or a warlock or anything like that or a wizard so he's just he's just kind of there <laughs> okay I can run I can run that like he he just shows up at, like at one at some point far down the line I really am kind of tickled by the idea of having a 100 pound dwarfling running around with a great sword I think that is hilarious and I want to see this happen um and if he's a fighter I can make that happen um so I just am really tickled by that thought but aside from that I have no grander designs for him other than be just be some sort of dumb yokel and I, now I just got to work out what kind of voice I want to throw at him um, because this one's not going to do. This is a little bit too articulate for him. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm so happy. <laughs> it brings me a fair bit of joy. Like, like, I t like when I texted you a couple of days ago, I was like, I have this kind of weird idea. I want to run this through you. And just, just, because I'm, I'm standing there, you know, shoveling glass off the table. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, this seems like a fun thing to think about while I'm sitting here miserable. <laughs> Misery's not the right word. Like I'm working with a guy right now who's fantastic. He's really making working at a glass factory a lot of fun. Um, but it is still working at a glass factory and you're still picking up 150 pound and 200 pound and 300 pound and 400 pound pieces of glass all week long. It's so much fun. Not at all. I was so happy I didn't work today. <laughs>
Okay. Who all are involved, by the way? I know it's me. I'm assuming Monkey. Just the three of us. Okay. I didn't figure Ducky would join. We will not have a mama bear. <laughs> Okay. <sighs> it, I'm just going to stop you right there. Sass will find a way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he doesn't have to. Like, Sass, you don't have to watch, listen, or anything else to these podcasts. But somehow or another, you think it's a good idea, which we don't necessarily agree with, but we appreciate your listening to it anyway. It makes it so we're not completely speaking to the void. Which the answer, it turns out, was one person. <laughs> Actually, actually, it's kind of amazing. I, I don't really have a way of uh, classifying whether they're unique viewers or not, but we have not had a single episode um, go out that has not um, garnered like eight or ten views. And I'm like, the last one, I mean, it's it's average, so some of them are a lot lower, other ones are higher, but, like, we're averaging like between 8 and 10 views. And I don't know if that's, like, Sass re-watching them or, or, like, splitting it up and doing this and that and the other, but, like, we're... there are people who have really nothing better to do with their day. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Are you doing a are we doing a Goblin Slayer campaign? Oh, that would be really cool. I like, I like that. I like that manga. I shouldn't because it's really quite horrifically bad. I mean, it, it, it's well written. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. I s kind of assume that with the whole disappearing thing. Well, the contract when it goes poof. Like Normal pieces of paper don't do that. <laughs> Just in case that wasn't, no, you know, that was uh, up for debate. This isn't Mission Impossible. This message will, will self-destruct in 13 seconds. <laughs> okay. Okay. In fairness, I probably can't read. <laughs> I mean, intelligence notwithstanding, I probably can't read. <laughs> Whatever that ends up being. <laughs> K. 
Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So, so this says an awful lot. Um, about the duration of this because there's, there's only a certain ooh, no so just level 20 all the way through are we going to Benjamin Button levels <laughs> <laughs> this cameras thing is really throwing me for a loop here because <laughs> there's a lot of communication that's happening that's not being heard this is an audio podcast <laughs> we don't have video <laughs> I'm not prepared to take this. <laughs> uh, it sounds like a lot of fun. Um Yeah. This almost I mean it kind of halfway sounds like Ghost Rider. Like you have a guy who maybe end up, who who might be kind of useful. You're not really sure. There's some question about it, and then he makes a unwitting contract with the devil and is suddenly imbued with like all the powers of hell, but he has to use them in service to the demonic lord. It's basically Ghost Rider, but as a party. <laughs> <laughs> Have we have we talked about my favorite meme from uh uh Falcon and the Winter Soldier? He uh when they're on Zemo's jet and Zemo's explaining something, I forget what it was he said, but um Sam is like, he's out of line, but he's right. <laughs> uh it's 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 classic. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So we will be kind of ben Benjamin buttoning levels. Okay. Uh oh, that's almost so Oh, there's so many like you're not you're not an anime guy, right? Okay. Uh so there's this whole subgenre called like isekai or or there's like three different variations on it. Um some of them like you're transported to a to a different world, other you're reincarnated, some of them you're kidnapped. There's one I read where he like is asked if he wants to come and then goes willingly. Although there was definitely some perks to going willingly. Leave that as it go as it is. Um, redheads, man. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, so like the but like the the, the genre is that as a cross between worlds they are imbued with very specific power like some sort of either very specific power to them or just general overpoweredness for being in this new world and it's the, they are imbued with that specifically to fight back the demon horde or destroy the demon king or, or some some sort of grand quest they have to go on that they're just kind of forced into and for some unknowable reason are just like totally cool with they're like yeah i'm, I'm here it's fine I'll, I'll kill the demon lord that's Great plan. Um, it's not necessarily the most well thought through 
uh, like most like every time that someone has an objection to it, it's like a big deal. And usually there's like other cast members who show up at that point and are like, oh no no we we this is the morally right thing to do. And you're like they they literally just kidnapped us from our world, and are now telling us to fight to the death super powered beings that we've never encountered before in our lives. And you're just telling us that it's the morally right thing to do to try and do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a great plan. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gotcha. That is the fun part about um uh, homebrew. You can do anything you want. Mm-hmm. So am I. It uh, it's 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 been too long since I was last in in a D and D campaign. Curse my schedule. Somewhere in the back of your mind. I mean, you have to use your brain to hate your brain. Kind of, kind of, kind of a weird juxtaposition there. I hate the thing I'm using to think about how much I hate the thing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, I am noted for, or I'm, I have a history of characters that are less than stellar morally. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, that'll be very interesting for me because basically he's starting off as true neutral because he has zero input. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. right if it had kept up I'd have probably got him evil that was I was I was turning that way very quickly <laughs> oh that was still some like that uh, out of character chat was still some of the best role play I've ever had oh it's so good like Hmm. 
Um, how so? Mm -hmm. there, there was the the Kiala thing where she's like let's have it, everyone tell us their entire backstory in session one and it's like but mm, yeah okay Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> mhm. Mm You got it. Some so yeah, in, in the so how many sessions has this question has this one been going? Out of question, out of curiosity, four. Okay. Because the question is, will Mo, will any of Mumble's campaigns actually make it to like session ten? <laughs> okay. I I think we had four for Theros, and then weird things happened. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. Um. Ooh. Tuesday after next, yeah. Wow. Um. But yeah. The the longevity of mobile's campaigns is always in question. <laughs> um. But but in but in the uh the ill the ill fated epic of Theros, it ended up being more of like the short story of Theros. <laughs> don't blink don't blink or you'll miss it. Um Yeah. Like you and you and you and Monkey were doing a really good job with you know role playing things through. The the wake up thing was pretty awesome. Um that was that was that was Fantastic. Um, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um that is that is kind of the difficulty. Yeah. With him there would be no running for mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Or 
or going on dates. And and to this day, still probably the best date I've ever been on. <laughs> and I wasn't even there. <laughs> Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what I did. That's what I did the first time I DM'd. I didn't have any stat blocks or anything. I didn't even know where to look. I didn't know that was a thing. I was like, oh, you have a creature. Uh, 15 hit points. That sounds great. How much are you doing? Two. That'd be fine. Just only seven of them. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. It's just fun. Hey, you're the one who tried to grow up the elf. <laughs> uh, that is true. Yoda's a Sith. How do you figure that? Okay. Hmm. No, he still doesn't qualify. He he's too much of a of a. Boy, is this going to be a controversial statement to throw, to throw out on the internet to the six people who watch? Maybe, um, <laughs> um. He's, he's too much of a conformist. He has, he has no, he literally has no passion for anything. Which in Star Wars, pro Jedi propaganda that it is, is portrayed in such a manner as to be, well, that's very noble, totally selfless, has no grander design or agenda except when it suits his purposes. But uh, I don't think he's I don't think he's a Sith. There's too many other things. Um in fact, just going from this from the Sith mantra, um, through power my chains are broken. Had he been a proper Sith, the chains of the Jedi Order would have not held him. He would have broken free of them. So not a sit. But I appreciate your attempt. Wait, not, not through power, through victory. My chains are broken. <clears throat> They're very results oriented. Power is not the end result. Sith do not pursue power for the sake of power itself. That's why Palpatine is not a Sith either, because all he wanted was more power. 
Alpatine is a heretic. <laughs> Who's blowing up the boundary? <laughs> There's like 9,000 fireworks going off outside my window right now. <laughs> Either that or the war has started. Just in case. <laughs> Let's say that one. That, that one. That one's empty. Eh? <laughs> if I get the other one out, I can do that. <laughs> uh. Okay. You a baseball fan, or were you just kind of there? Interesting. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm I've only been to three types of sports events in my life. Been to two basketball games, one hockey game, minor league. I've been to two baseball games. Basketball games, I don't care for basketball anyway. And yeah, and they're they're all getting up and they're they're playing a little song. Everyone's doing the dance, and I'm like, I am not one of these people. <laughs> We had that conversation a couple weeks ago. <laughs> but I'm just like, I'm not one of these people. I'm not going to do this. I don't care. Um, hockey was a lot more interesting to me. Um, although mostly just because I wanted to see somebody get plastered into the boards like three times. And uh, it's actually... Well, it is kind of a northern thing. You don't have one of the key... L oh, really? Man, rollerblades? <laughs> Okay, just checking. I assume it's a lot harder to get down there. <laughs> right. Anyway, so um, we have a minor league team up here called the Vipers, which is sub, like less than the Red Wings. And years ago, there was this very famous Detroit hockey player named Gordy Howe, and he played for the Red Wings. And then he and uh, the kind. Of, Half retired to the Vipers, and then he retired fully. And then, for some reason or another, the game that I was there was a special. He's coming back to play one last game, kind of thing. So I was at Gordy Howe's last game, and everyone's like, "Oh, he's gonna do all the stuff he did when he was younger." And he basically just skated slowly around the outside of the arena, and he's like, "Yeah, okay, I'm done," <laughs> and just left. It's very, it was very exciting. Well, again, back in the day, he was the guy who knocked people's teeth out with a stick, and all. just that, that part's exciting. Um, but baseball games, I agree one hundred percent. Those are so relaxed. I I was at a baseball game. I got free tickets to one. I think last year, like maybe it was two years ago, because um, last year was cold. That, but. And I and I definitely wasn't wearing a mask at it, so <laughs> it was probably something else, probably the year before. Um, yeah, that was the they gave us tickets because we helped get a bunch of attorneys to France, which was a lot of extra work. And they're like, you should have some extra something here. Here, go watch a baseball game. I'm like, that's exactly what I want to do with my time. <laughs> um. But I went with a friend of mine because he gave me two tickets, and we just sat there and talked the whole time, and 
occasionally we're like, oh, what's the crowd being upset, you know, excited about? And they're, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, <laughs> like great seats, I assume. I don't know what, what qualifies as good seats for a baseball game, but we were like right at first base, so it's farther than I've ever gotten in life. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> I, I walked you right into that. It was great. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's actually not even, that's not even true. Just that that's the first I've gotten since I was like seven. So, <laughs> so that's a whole other story for another time. I mean, probably one we've already told in it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so we're there. And uh, we were just talking, catching up, and all of a sudden we see like all these people stand up. We're like, "What's going on?" And they start leaving, and we're like, "Oh, I guess it's over." <laughs> Very indicative of how thoroughly invested we were in the game. <laughs> just a, just a night, okay? Yeah. Hmm. You're getting like a list going out here. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Right. I know that man's feeling. I know exactly where he's coming from. Mm hmm. Right. Okay. So to her, he's a challenge. And you're just like, love me. No. <laughs> Okay, but like, how? Does. Up or down? Oh, the, the down? Okay, yeah. You'd have to wait like six years for her to get into your bracket. And then it would be a creep because you're like, you knew her when and you waited how long to do what to. It's not creepy at all. <laughs> uh. 
uh, about trying to get your sister and this other guy hooked up, and then you can hook up with the other. Well, not hook up, but you know, wedding bells and marriage and yada yada and birds and rainbows and harps and. Right? Get your steps in before then. You're like, look at how strong I am. I can walk this trail like no one's business. <laughs> uh huh. Oh. Uh. Did I ever tell you the story about my uh, elementary school principal? So we were at uh, the zoo here in, in uh, Detroit. Uh, there's this little trail that used to um, go a lot farther than it does now. They blocked it off a couple years ago. Like They blocked it off like 20 feet back from this one particular trail tree is famous to my like every time we go there we go and see the tree kind of thing because of this this moment so my principal when i was in grade school was kind of a kind of you know he was the he was the cool guy you know but not like the fake cool guy he was like actually interesting <laughs> he wasn't trying to be cool he realized that he was kind of, he just he realized he was kind of a nerd and he just embraced it um uh, no there's there, like there's a there's a certain point where you can embrace your own nerdiness and it works and he he kind of had that going for him, um, which he kind of had to because his first name was Stacy, but the, <laughs> and it wasn't until year, years later that I heard Johnny Cash's boy named Sue and thought that was hilarious, <laughs> but anyway so uh, Principal Stacy, <laughs> not his, not his not his first, last name his first name he's walking along and he's trying to you know entertain trying to be the, the, the card and, and make people laugh and so we're walking along and he's picking these trees and like making said oh, oh he's pretending like he hit his head on a tree like he wasn't watching where he was going and this girl in my class not one that I was interested in became progressively less so after this happened <laughs> it's just like walking along and she thought oh well it's if it's funny that he does it it's funny if I do it too but she didn't realize that he wasn't actually smacking his head into a tree like tapping it with his foot make the sound and you know ending like he's injured and so she walks just like beelines just picks up this pace like triple time walks right up to this tree stops dead and just bam her face right into the tree <laughs> <laughs> knocked herself down and we're all like <laughs> Yeah, of course he was he was a lot more sympathetic because he realized that he was in fact the problem she would have never done that had he not <laughs> done that. but it was still like wow I can't believe anyone was actually that stupid <laughs> that, was, that, that was one of my first in, introdu introductions to the concept oh not the word of schadenfreude <sighs> absolutely gorgeous not her. But <laughs> kind of look like a tree. No. <laughs> uh-huh. He moved down there. Okay. Any any further information about that? Like Okay. Like, what part of Michigan is he from? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That is... That covers l so much ground. <laughs> like, you can be an hour away and still be just outside of Detroit. <laughs> I'm... 
Uh, I mean, I, I can tell you, and two people watching, you know, <laughs> they ain't gonna find me, and if they do, I got it. <laughs> yeah, um, yes, yeah, so specifically, but uh, it, it's so it Detroit is right on the water, and then there's and then there's a suburb around it, and then there's like. 30 cities that are around the suburb. And then there's another ring out beyond that. And then it starts to get a little bit rural. And all the way out to that rural area, you can be just outside of Detroit. I am like just on that fringe between the outer ring of cities and starting to get rural. I, weird as this is, I am 40 minutes from hell. Hell, of course, being the city in Michigan. Actually, it's, it's, I, I did some research on it after I found out how close I was. Because I never, I, it's always that, that idea that like some place you just kind of want to go to go. Like, I want to go to hell. That seems, that seems like a really great thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> like, I also want to go to Sheboygan, but that's for a whole other reason and not Wisconsin. I want to go to Sheboygan, Michigan. Because I think it's funny to say that. It, just the word Sheboygan to me is is, is hilarious, and uh, and I looked right. Mm hmm. It's really funny. I, I'm, just, I'm actually checking with it right now. Uh, is it Shib Yes, it still says it. It's greatest. Okay. So I'm going to post this in the World Wars podcast thread. So I've, I've checked this periodically over the years since the thought first occurred to me that I should go visit Sheboygan. This is their official city website in their visitor section, things under the heading of things to do in Sheboygan. Um... And to me, this is one of the funniest things ever. Because it's been this way for years. And it just says, This section is currently being developed. In the meantime, please visit the Sheboygan Area Chamber of Commerce or browse our calendar of events for things to do in Sheboygan. Which, to me, says that there is, in fact, absolutely nothing to do in Sheboygan. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I, th th that to me is a great reason to go. Just for just to say that I've been to the place where there is nothing happening. So it says their website. <laughs> it's a four-hour drive. That's why I haven't gone. Uh, okay. Actually, it's probably like five and a half. I mean, it should be five and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's it's all the way at the top of the mitten. Mm hmm Yeah. That like that's not bad. You just <clears throat> so I had a chance to talk about this earlier this week with somebody else. Um, when I was in Minnesota, we went down to the mystery cave, um, and the person I was there with, they got up an hour late, um, 
which is kind of problematic when you're trying to get there for a 10 a.m. Uh, tour. And it's the only tour that was happening that day. It was like off season. There, it was like the one day that we were going to be there. They had the tour, and it started at 10 o'clock. And if you missed it, you missed it. So she says to me, like, okay, we're going to get up and all this kind of stuff. And I says, okay, great, fine, not a problem. So I get up and I hear nothing and I see nothing and I try to contact her and I text her and I knock on her door and there's nothing and there's nothing and there's nothing. And finally, like a long time after we should have left already, she finally like opens the door and she's like, I just got up. I don't know what happened. I just slept through everything. And I'm like, well, if we can leave in 15 minutes, we can still make it. She goes, okay, really? I said, trust me. <laughs> so we left in 15 minutes, <clears throat> and we made it. And then we found out that, in fact, the information on the website was wrong. We could have taken our sweet time and gotten down there at like 1130. But, you know, that's a whole thing that didn't end up playing out that way. <laughs> really? I must be farther away. Okay, so that is probably the wrong information. Um, because I short while ago I was doing calculations to go down there <laughs> and um, uh, it was about 11 hours to Huntsville so I mean I don't have to message you and just tell you it doesn't like the city's not going to help anyone um, it's called South Lion L-Y-O-N Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Also nice. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> no, I would never like that's going out of your way. Maybe at the time there was some construction or something happening because that happens a lot along 75 through Ohio. And then for like a year, they just stop. They don't fix anything, but they just stop. And then the next year they pick it back up and they block off half of 75 all the way through Ohio again. I almost jumped the median in a minivan one time because of that. <laughs> so I'm driving, I'm driving south to visit my family in, in Cle uh, not Cleveland, in Dayton. And um, Ohio apparently has this thing with uh, a construction that they don't really let you know it's coming up. They just and like not even like cones or anything they just get the big cement barriers and block off the lane and uh, that was very exciting because I'm driving and we're going down in this minivan and all of a sudden like there's a cement barrier that's like 100 feet in front of me and there's a car right next to me and I'm like ah uh, this is going to be really fun isn't it <laughs> clipped it a little bit it's fine there's a little thing on the driver's side mirror I like with how it felt like we hit it it seems as though we should have like launched upward and like come down on the other side but somehow we didn't I'm claiming like Jesus because <laughs> it's everything else just doesn't make sense like we should not have ended up in the place that we did <laughs> um but uh yeah it was fun I think.
Yes. Aha, uh -huh. very important. I mean, it's very important in like two weeks, but. Very nice. So basically, do we should we just like make two characters at this point? Make one for level one, one for level twenty, and then, or just or just adjust it accordingly. Just just for, okay. Okay. All right. Now that you've mentioned the whole derailing thing, I'm like, I wonder if we can stretch session one like three weeks. <laughs> I wrote a song about that once. You will die here tonight. I will kill you on the just a fight. Sorry. The trick is, when you do when you do that, it's very much in character. Like it has to be in character. So I'm sitting here in my tiny little apartment, in my tiny little room, in my tiny little apartment. My room is smaller than my apartment. It's crazy. That is imagine. This is not the TARDIS. Um and and so like I'm sitting here in my tiny little room with like neighbors eighteen inches that way. And I'm like and I'm just like <laughs> Heal tonight, I will kill you. <laughs> yeah. In in full character. Yeah. Mm hmm Okay. Right. That's always the Mm -hmm. I think the lady down below me who sings, I think she is connected with the church somehow. Because I've heard a couple songs where it's like, uh, where, where there's like a clear mention of Jesus and God kind of thing, but it's very sporadic. And then there's other times where it's just like, that's not a Christian song. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Mm hmm. It's so crazy. <laughs> oh, I was, I was just going to say, man, I should really, I really wish I was like more ethnic. I could just play like some sort of like incredibly ethnic music everywhere I went, but then I realized, hey, I'm Scottish. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Bag pipes. <laughs> uh, no, 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 not to play them, but just to just to have them. <laughs> just, just, just like, just like have it blaring out of my car everywhere I go. Um, that'd be so fun. Although, as much as I do like bagpipes, there's a limit. Like, there's a there's a defined limit where you have gone too far, and you must now stop. <laughs> Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Well, yay for the home team. Unless they're facing Detroit, in which case, boo for the home team. 
<laughs> I don't even care. Oh, so this is like a local team. Okay. Chattanooga, Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's the place for me. Or there's going to be a certain party at the station. It better be the Chattanooga Choo Choo's because that's what the song is. Baseball is the Chattanooga Lookouts. Clearly, a very well thought out and intentional and brilliant. Um, yeah, never mind. <laughs> they would be better off calling themselves the Chattanooga Choo Choo's and then just play the song every say every game. Oh, I know that feeling. <laughs> we went out to eat a couple of weeks ago, and I, I, I've now made it kind of a habit, which is not a good habit, but I've made it a kind of a habit that every time I go out to eat with like a group of people, and there's like, you know, families and couples and all kinds of stuff, and they're like, oh, and we'll be on this pill together, and we'll be on this pill together, and we'll be on this pill together. And I'm like, and I'm all by myself. <laughs> and, um, Everyone's getting tired of me. I think that might be why so many people are trying to get me connected with a girl. <laughs> Just so I'll stop singing the stupid song. <laughs> uh. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. Poor design decisions. What's that? What's that Reddit? Uh, great idea, poor execution. Mm hmm. Right. Hmm. You're hard. Someone's probably having a laugh. Thought that was funny.
No idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the people on the internet are weird. You know, like the the sad face uh, guy drinking a coffee meme. Uh, uh, let me see if I can find it. There we are. Diversifying. Yeah, I'll throw it already here. So this guy, for whatever reason, just got hired to do like stock photography or have his picture taken for stock photography, and then he has this rather famous picture where he's like has a a mug, and uh, well, he has a bunch of pictures, but like all of all of them have kind of the same. <laughs> all of them have the same expression, and he says he's like completely happy. He is a very happy fellow, but like he has some of the most dead, unexpressionless eyes <laughs> ever. So he's kind of like, uh, oh, it's like, um, hide the pain, Harold. That's his name. Here we go. That's the that's the that's the classic uh, picture that we get of him. But it's just stock photography, and then. Someone saw it and thought it was, yeah, someone saw it and thought it was funny. And so it's like totally upended his life. But he did a TED talk, which he's now, um, uh, <laughs> like, and this is one of the, and, and it spawned a whole new meme all about him <laughs> because it's so great. <laughs> So it's like he's he's kind of upset about it, but he's trying to be a good sport. But at the same time, he's like, this is not how my life was supposed to go. And so he gives this TED talk about how it's affected him. And he's like, he's like, well, and this is not something that I ever planned to be in you know, when I set out in life or when I, you know, signed up to be part of this stock photography photo shoot. But rather that it's a role given to me by the Internet people. <laughs> and... um. That might be even better than the original one. <laughs> uh, it's it's so good. I I am uh, so yeah. I I don't know where it was going with that, but I thought it was funny. Um. Oh yeah, I was in the good taste, bad execution thread. I don't know. Um, I got distracted. Shiny objects. That's all I got. We should talk about the Bad Batch. We were definitely supposed to watch that. Did you not watch the Bad Batch? Okay, that's good. I was thinking the same thing. I mean, it's it's really kind of a fan service tie-in episode. They're like, oh, here's how Jabba got his Rancor. And then you and then you're watching it and you're like, but like I know what happens to that rancor. <laughs> like, this is not a happy ending story. <laughs> uh, like it's even it's actually even worse than that. So um there's a book called that was written back in like the late eighties, early nineties, again around the same time when a lot of the really good legend stuff was being uh put out. It's called Tales from Jabba's Palace. And one of them is the story of the Rancor Keeper. And he was hired because he had, he was like part of a circus and Jabba hired slash kidnapped him kind of thing to be the caretaker for his Rancor. Because like, I want to make sure that this thing is, you know, always hungry. Um, <laughs> had a moment's notice, so so to speak. Um, and so he comes in and, he's, and he like really attaches and bonds with with it. And he comes to a point where he's like, this is wrong. This, 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 this animal should not be in this sort of situation. And so his whole story from Jabba's Palace is about how he's going to rescue the Rancor. And he has everything set up in like three days 
there he's going to get this thing off world and everything's gonna be great and he's gonna take it back to Dathomir and he's gonna make sure that it's you know among its kind and it can live free and happy and he's gonna run away from Jabba's palace too. It's all everything is laid out. And then a guy wearing a black cloak walks into Jabba's palace. <laughs> It says, you release Captain Solo and the Wookiee to me. <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> Which explains, like, when, when, it, like, when it dies, why he's so distraught. He's like, he's like, like, like he it's kind of a weird moment in the movie without context. And you're just watching it like, okay, wait, what? Uh, is he sad that he didn't kill Luke? What's going on here? Like, because when I was, like, you know, seven watching the movies for the first time, I'm like, oh, wow, it's kind Kind of a weird thing. I watched it over, over, over and over again, like I did. <laughs> and I'm like, why? Why is this guy so sad about this? And then I read the book, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's it's kind of messed up, actually. <laughs> and now, and now it has a whole new wrinkle because it was delivered there by the good guys to eventually get killed by Luke Skywalker. Like you know, <laughs> just a couple of days before it would have been set set free and sent back to Dathomir. Um, yeah. Fun. We d we did get to see Omega. She now has her bow, although she hasn't quite figured out what to do with it yet. That'll be, I'm sure that'll be a great conversation to start off the next episode. <laughs> so what's this piece of flotsam you picked up? It's an energy weapon. Everybody at the deck. <laughs> yeah. Like, she has a new toy. Um, I get the feeling like, like we're going to see a lot more of Sid, which I, I'm hoping she'll grow on me. But I was, I, like, I've been actively hoping that Hondo would show up a lot more. The guy from, uh, yeah. Cause, and he's like, he is Dave Filoni's masterpiece, in my opinion. He is so good. So he he's in Clone Wars, and the, he steps up. He he interacts with Obi Wan like three or four times. Yeah, three. Mm -hmm. So he's and and like he's also very prominent in uh, in Rebels. So. It's not like he took a couple years off. <laughs> or not like he took 20 years off to go from, you know, Caleb Doom to uh, Kanan. Like, cause he's pretty old by the time we get around to seeing him. And uh, well, I guess yeah, I guess it would have been about maybe 15, 16 years. So he'd have been like 30s, probably. Uh, I was just thinking, yeah, he got a lot farther than I did by 30. <laughs> Little green haired munchkin running around. Uh, I never said I was a good person. I never said I had good ideas or made, or made decent jokes. <laughs> Uh. Launch pad? Okay. Okay. You're not a subs guy. I can, I can be a subs guy. I, there are some things that are really good as subs. Um, and there's some other stuff that's just awful. <laughs> Strangely enough, um, one of the classic animes, at least, oh uh, yeah, classics, and and one of the reasons why. It's one of the few animes that's bigger here in the U.S. than it is in, in Japan, is Cowboy Bebop. 
Um, and the reason for that is entirely the voice acting. The English voice acting is leagues better than the Japanese voice acting. Um, it's, it's just top notch all the way through. And it's not like the Japanese voice acting is bad, but like they went for an, like the entire tone of the series is different based on the decisions the actors made. Um, like, like in Japan, in Japan, it's kind of like this, oh, kind of jokey kind of guy. And he's running around doing all kind of stuff. And then you, and, and in America, you have Steve Bloom talking about the complexities of life and the inevitabilities of death coming upon us. And we are all just travelers in the universe trying to stretch out the distance between those two points as far as possible. And someday we shall all meet. It's like, it's like totally different tone. Same lines. But really, really, really different tone, uh, just based off the voice acting, and and the English one is so much better. Um, so yeah, tonality. Uh huh. That fair. Um, that, that that is a difficulty. You kind of have to really. You have to just split your attention somewhat. I tend to focus more on the reading, and just kind of let things happen in front of me, and I pick up on enough of the visuals, at least for my for my taste but um yeah it, i i definitely understand the the difficulty of trying to find that delicate balance but i'm also i mean not to flaunt my privilege or anything but i am the son of an english teacher who made sure I, that i was very well versed in english and everything from the time i was like so I have a little bit of extra extra help in terms of, of reading and things like that. She made very very sure of that. Like by the time I was seven, I had heard I had not read myself, but I had heard the entire King James Bible read at least three or four times that I that I could, you know, actually cognizantly listen to. Um as well as a number of other stories and things like that. My parents were very big on reading to, to us as kids, and my grandparents even more so. Um, I get you. I, 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 I really get you. I'm not, I'm not trying to downplay that. Hmm. That's how I come up with all my best sermons while I'm listening to other people preach and they mention something. And I'm like, oh, that's a great thought. Let's think about that. <laughs> I get this with my pen and paper out and I'm writing things down. And it looks like I'm very dutifully taking notes and I'm like, not there at all. <laughs> uh. It's a wonder sometimes that my past stores, because I have multiple of them now. <laughs> um, but so. I had my pastor in Troy, which is where I used to go. And now I have my pastor in South Lyon. And I have his father-in-law, who is a retired pastor, but he's only kind of retired. And he still really likes the whole pastoring thing. So uh, the, those two, the ones here in South Lyon, are the ones who are like, let's connect you with so-and-so. Like, okay. Redheads, man. <laughs> the judgment and disappointment in Master's face right now is beautiful. <laughs> uh.
I knew a guy like that, but didn't retire. Like when he was younger, he felt like he felt this call to preach, called me a ministry, called me a pastor, like kind of progressive, progressive thing. And he's like, I don't want to be a pastor. He was going to his church for a couple of years, and and his pastor one day steps up from the congregation and says, "All right, everybody, I've heard from the, the word from the Lord. I'm supposed to go to this place. I'm going to start a church. I'll be leaving. This is my last service. Um, I'm going to be leaving you all in the care of a man right here." And he became the new pastor <laughs> by default. He's kind of a conscientious fellow, so he raised up a guy to replace him within like two or three years. And he says, "I don't want to be a pastor, so the church is yours." And he left and he moved someplace else. He's going to that church for about six months. The pastor steps up and says, I've heard from the Lord. I'm supposed to go start a church in this place. This man right here is just come among us. going to be your new pastor. Good luck, good luck, everybody. This is my last service. He's there for like two, two or three more years. He raises somebody else up. He says, I don't want to be a pastor. you got to take this over for me. Pass it off to him. He moves some, like five times this happened. <laughs> finally, he gets to Michigan. Like he started in North Carolina. And he finally gets to Michigan. He's like, okay, I'll be a pastor now. <laughs> <laughs> like this one's following you you're not getting away from this one <laughs> you can do it like I tell you or you can do it like I make you you don't really have a choice in this one <laughs> oh man people this is crazy but they're fun most, most of the time <laughs> oh Yesterday, I was actually supposed to, you know, go and be pastor mentored by the by my pastor's father in law, and uh, I call him after work, and I've been up since like three o'clock in the morning because I work at four, and uh, I'm like, yeah, I, I can I can meet for something. He says, okay, well, why don't you just come right over here to my my son in law's house, and we'll have a have a meal here. Okay, I got in so much trouble. <laughs> Because I walk in the front door and uh, my my pastor, it's his house, so he's there, and um, he is interested in firearms, and he is a couple, and he's looking at getting a couple more, and he asked me a couple questions about these on Thursday, and I'm like, okay, I have to get up at three. Quick question, answer. Well, his quick question turned into an hour and a half long conversation. So that at 10 o'clock, his wife texts me and says, send my husband home. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm trying to get out of here. I got to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm not the one to play here. It's his fault. Um, so I walk in the front door and he like comes out of the back of the house to, to greet me. And he's like, so I got this other question about this thing. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I did know. But I did <laughs> His, his wife's like, no God, talk before dinner. He's like, I won't say what he said. He said the wrong thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, that that's that like, that's that's not even in the right context. <laughs> it's more something to the effect of like silence woman sort of thing. <laughs> and it's like, like that's not. He was not sincere. He was not serious about it. He was making a joke, but <laughs> it was still the wrong thing to say. And you could, you could just see that look come across her face where it's like she knew that it was a joke, but she was choosing not to take it that way. And he was going to hear about it as soon as I was out of the house, <laughs> which is probably why they kept me there for like five hours. <laughs> oh. We wanted to put that off as long as possible. But it's, I mean, but it's, I mean, yeah, it's fun. They introduced me to a new program that I'm probably going to have to start watching. I, they've been after me to start to watch it for like the last year and a half, and I've been putting it off because I have so much time. I can't imagine why I wouldn't just sit down and watch a lengthy program. Um, but it's actually really good. It's called The Chosen, and it's a biblical adaptation and I'm going to be honest it's really good and and it and it solves one of the major issues that I've had with every other biblical adaptation which is that the people who are portrayed are not real people 
their caricatures who are super stoic and super serious and never have any fun and never really gal around never, and like and are only ever focused on make sure that the kingdom of god is brought forth into this world and blah. And it's like i'm sure there was times where that was the case but not all the time like you would go insane literally you would go insane and so they have this very diverse both ethnically and also uh presentationally and and mentally and everything else like just very diverse cast of people who are filling in the um the disciples and the disciples are turning out to be very diverse people uh like of particular interest uh matthew is being portrayed as someone who may have like asperger's or something but in the time of jesus that no one really would have known that he's very numbers oriented he's very detail oriented he just kind of repeats what people say he's he's just very very um he, like he met he meets a lot of those dsm5 qualifications and I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I can, like, I, I found a new favorite. <laughs> like, um, there's a couple other people who are like very outspoken kind of people, and they're, and they're, and, and like, of course, there's Peter, and Peter's just like, he's like the high school Chad who's still in high school in his mind, but is not otherwise. And it's great. Which, which from reading of scripture, yeah, that's kind of who he was. <laughs> um, I haven't really. I've. I only saw two episodes, and those are the two most recent ones uh, that have been released. I saw those both those last night, um, but I was very impressed. Um, everything is handled very carefully. There's a couple things, like even in those two episodes, there's a couple things where like, uh, I don't really agree with how you're, pre you're how you're presenting this. Um, like the episode before the most recent one, they're talking about is the. the of Bethesda, where the lame man is healed, um, who had been laying, who had been you know, lame for thirty-eight years. Well, um, they kind of present the pool of Bethesda as being like a hot spring that has, you know, just, oh, it just bubbles up every day. And if you're and like, and then they make it as being like, well, there's other ones here and there in the other place with so some sort of like pagan shrine and ritual kind of thing. And why would any Jew or or a person who believes in the one God ever go there? Kind of, and it's like. Well, okay, I can, and even as they're walking into the city, like Jesus and his disciples are discussing it, and the disciples are like, well, how will we ever figure out? Like, maybe someday in the future they'll figure out why it is that the pool does this thing, as though it really is just sort of some, as though it really is just some sort of geothermal reaction, and it's presented very much that way. Like when they show the water being troubled, as as is said in, in uh, John chapter five, um, it does look like a like a small geyser or something underneath the pool. Okay. Fine. And and there is some certain healing properties and stuff that, that are present in hot springs and geysers and things like that. But that's not what the scripture says. The scripture says that at certain seasons, at certain times, that an angel would come down and trouble the water, and whosoever it was that got into the water first was healed. That's where the description ends in scripture. It says it doesn't say that they rested in the hot spring for a while and the minerals soaked into their body and they became healthy and well. It says that an angel came down and a supernatural thing from God happened happen every day it didn't happen you know quarterly or anything it was like at certain times it would happen we didn't know when those times were so you better be ready you better be prepared you better keep your eyes on the pool because that's where your salvation was going to come from except sometimes it comes from behind you and taps you on the shoulder and says hey would you like to be made well <laughs> um great story. such a great story um but so i had a little bit of an issue with that one because i'm like uh, you know I see what you're doing, but I disagree. Like, you're di this is one point where you are definitively departing from scripture. Um, like, the scriptures like it was a supernatural occurrence and it worked. Otherwise, people wouldn't have stuck around. If if someone says, "You shall know them by your fruits," that another biblical passage, like you know, if a prophet comes and he says this and and it comes to pass. I'll probably believe him. He seems like he's doing a good thing. If the prophet comes up and says something and it doesn't come to pass, you might want to double check him before you believe anything else that he says. So if you have this pool that heals people, but it doesn't actually heal people, it's not going to be too terribly long before someone goes, hey, like I still have this wart on my arm and I was in the water first last time and it's still here. I'm not healed at all. Oh, well, I guess this doesn't work. And people just start filtering out. Um, so I think their presentation of it kind of did a lot of, I, mean, I don't want to say damage, but it really misrepresented what was happening there. Um, 
I mean, it worked narratively with the larger story that they're telling, and it is episodic. So you do kind of have to start at the beginning, which I didn't do, but I'm probably going to. Because um, I, th I thought they were just like people in the Bible, and it was going to be like little vignettes. And they're going to say, okay, well, here's the story of this part of David's life, and here's the story of this part of Saul's life, and here's Zacchaeus, and all this kind of stuff, and just kind of pinball around and go to all over the Bible. But they really are just telling the story of Jesus, and it's going to be end up being eight eight episode seasons for sixty four total episodes, and there are they just released episode five I think on Tuesday of season two, so it's 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 pretty solid. Um, I I I will be watching. <laughs> and mo and that's that's me being. Coming to terms with my own words. <laughs> it's begrudging. Like, I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it, darn it, because they're pretty good and entertaining and good people and good acting. And Okay, some uh, acting-wise, some of the villain conversations, like the people who are doing bad things, like the Romans and the Sanhedrinists, like, some of them have the most cliche villain lines of all time, and I've only seen two episodes, and they still have some of the most cliche villain lines of all time. And I just kind of have to get past that because people apparently have no imagination for what makes a good villain. <laughs> like, like if you're if you're going to create a character, make a good one. <laughs> Give him a motivation beyond just "I'm going to make sure that Jesus doesn't get to fulfill his ministry on Earth." <laughs> like, um, no, <laughs> that doesn't work for. Me. But uh, yeah, the next episode I think is like is is coming out in a couple of weeks. Um, because it's supposed to be like very special effects heavy. It's probably going to be like Jesus walking on water or something. Um, they're, they're taking it very slow. Like they're thirteen episodes in, and Simon just joined the party. <laughs> um, not not Simon Peter, Simon the Zealot. Multiple Simons in that. So. Two Judases, two Johns, two James. People really need to have some diversity in what they called each other back then. There's a, like, if you really read scripture, there's like five different Marys who were connected to Jesus. It's like, it's like, okay, so this Mary got delivered from this, and this Mary got delivered from this, and this one gave birth to Jesus, and this one was the sister of Lazarus, and then there's this there's a lot of Marys here. Uh, even in, um, uh, even at the, uh, the sepulcher, it says that, oh, you know, Mary Magdalene, out of whom was cast seven devils, and Salome. And Salome is actually a nickname, and her name is also Mary. <laughs> I was like, really? Someone needs to name their dog, their kid, something else. <laughs> Apparently it wasn't a very big book. It was a little tiny book and there's like six names in it. <laughs> uh, like. <laughs> uh, that was... Not quite, but kind of halfway. My pastor's lesson on Thursday, he was pointing out some of the personalities of the disciples that kind of leaked into scripture. Like, apparently, there was a very intense rivalry between uh, Peter and John, like very intense rivalry. Um, and it's and it's it's blatantly on the page, just right in your face. Um, you know, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh. In the Garden of Gethsemane, it says that one of the disciples cut off the ear of the high priest servant. In John, which was written thirty or or more thirty to sixty years after the you know the other Gospels, it's very clear it was Peter that cut it off. <laughs> like, like that was the guy. I was there. I remember. And and it and even like when they're walking on the sea of when Jesus is walking on the Sea of Galilee, you know, it's like okay, well. Um, it's mentioned. It's 
pointed out. And John's the one who records like, yeah. And then Peter started sinking in the surf <laughs> and, um, uh, particular one of my pastor's favorite ones is that the, uh, after the resurrection of Jesus, it says that the women came back and they told the disciples that Jesus had risen, that the tomb was open, the stone was rolled away. And John referring to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved where he's only called that in the Gospel of John. So, you know, kind of a little bit of still one-upmanship happening there. But, and then and then uh, he goes one step further, and he's like, and that one outran Peter all the way and got there first, and then very respectfully waited outside, and then Peter runs up later and barges right in and starts ransacking the place. Where is Jesus? <laughs> it's like, a little bit right into the text there, but I mean... Yeah. It would fit within his personality that's presented. You know, he's not particularly the most subtle of people. Um, <laughs> Ye men of Galilee. Okay, well, you've got my attention now. I don't know. But it, it, it is kind of fun to, to kind of look through all the different nuances of Scripture that are... Like, the, the text alone... It's fantastic, but there's a lot of things that are kind of subtext that make for a much more engaging and exciting reading experience. And when you start to put all those together to kind of pull out, not just, okay, well, this is what the, this is what the words say, but this is kind of the, the, the context in which they were written. Like, you know, pretty much everything in there was written for a Jewish audience. So you kind of have to take everything as a, as being from that perspective, which is all part of a very of a much larger uh, field of study called hermeneutics. If you really want to bend your brain around something difficult, <laughs> I have a great big book of hermeneutics over here about how to interpret scripture and everything else like that. I've gotten halfway through the first chapter three times and no further. <laughs> I really should read that book someday, but it is not this day. <laughs> um, There, there are, there are like, there's like four major things. I remember a couple of them. Like, always remember who was written to. Always be sure to read things in context. If you're not really sure about what something means, then start looking it up in other translations or in the Greek or the Hebrew, whichever was the original language. There's probably another one that's like a very important thing that I'm forgetting. But those three typically give you your answer if there's something in scripture that you're not really sure about. Um. Those usually clear up any sort of questions or errors. So, fun. Yes. Okay. I looked at a lot of TikToks of, over, earlier today. I think I looked at all the ones that were sent to me, not just by you, but by other people which is a great use of my time. <laughs> and, and I'm not sure which one you're referring to. Mm. Oh, not watch that. I watched the ones you sent earlier in the week. See if I can open this without blowing out speakers. Oh, actually. Barely an inconvenience. Okay. <laughs> oh, that looks cool. That that guy doesn't know how to handle a handle a, a weapon. Are they just like stalking off each other? Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that they're like totally, at, uh, you know, maneuvering around a virtual environment. Yeah, that'd be super cool. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, so there's actually a, my 3D printer right now is down. I think we talked about that. Yeah, layer shifting, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's another 3D printer I'm looking at, which has not yet come to market. And it is a infinitely printing 3D printer. So right now, all 3D printers that are available on the market have a clearly defined workspace. They can only print within a certain you know, geometry. Um, what they did with this new printer is they have turned it on a 45 degree angle so that it can print infinitely on the Z axis. So you have your X and your Y that go kind of back like this, and then they can make it infinitely long. So there's a guy who got his hands on one of the early production models and he printed out like a 12 foot long plastic girder because why not? He has six to do that. Um, but it, it came out really well. I mean, there's a little bit of bumping and warping in it, but things like 3D printed swords and things like that are about to become a whole lot better. Also, here's the other thing. And this is something, uh, actually, I guess I could show that I could do this this way rather than just flex on camera. No one else can see. <laughs> um, I actually have better than 3D printed swords. So, you know, not that I'm trying to. Yeah, I, I guess I am trying to flex, but. <laughs> um, I don't have I don't have a cutlass. Nope. That's that's a rapier. I have a I have a rapier. I have a falchion. I have an armoring sword, and then I have a small dagger. The rapier is purely a prop. The others, what? Uh. -uh. I have my trusty pocket knife that I use for everything that I definitely shouldn't use for everything. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because the because of the clay content. There we go. There's my sword collection. Difficult here going back to things I don't remember. Uh, one from the 20th. Oh, uh, I've not been there, but I, I've heard of it. I've been to what's called the fridge, which is like that, but better. Um, so the fridge is only open from like November to March because it's an ice slide and they it's kind of like a pseudo toboggan run where they load up four people in a in this little sled and they send it down the ice chute. Um we almost went off the end of their stop because we had Back in the day, I was a little bit heavier than I am right now. I was like 260, something like that at the time. I had a friend, he was about 210. And then we had these two other guys who were bigger than both of us. One was a bit over 300, and the other one was like just, just on the short side of 300. And we all loaded up, you know, in this cart. And it's got like this nice big rubber stopper at the end, as opposed to like create a bunch of friction, which it Definitely did that day. <laughs> it's supposed to stop you from just like running off into the woods with their toboggan. Um, and we came within like 13 inches of the end of it. And it was smoking when we got off. We had so like, and it's a, it's a legit uh, lengthy piece of like hard cast rubber that is designed just to stop this toboggan. And we almost ran off the end of it. It was, it was, it was good. We had almost... 
Oh, I guess we did actually have like a thousand pounds of person on this card, on this little toboggan. Oh, it was very fun. Oh, that's, that's fair. Well, why? Thank God, no. I got my second COVID shot yesterday at work. They sponsored it and everything, and they're paying me to get it. Um, so they figured that everyone might be feeling kind of poorly today. So they decided to give everyone, make sure that everyone got the day off, today, which which was very appreciated. I didn't know. I, here's the thing. I don't know if I actually had negative side effects from this shot or if my body was just totally unprepared for a day of relaxation because I woke up this morning and I felt terrible. Just awful. Everything hurt. I was, but it's like, I don't know at this point if that was because of the shot or if that was just Saturday. <laughs> but like all of it clearly. Well, like everything cleared up by like noon. Yeah, not a big deal. Um, and then I kind of halfway still broke the CDC guidelines because you're supposed to wait two weeks before you take your mask off. And I said, ah, screw it. My my pass my thing. My thing says I'm vaccinated. I'm gonna go with that. Um. That was, that was fun. In fact, tomorrow is our church's first day maskless. Reach what we are referring to as critical mass of like everybody's either had it or they've gotten vaccinated. So, why do we have our chairs seven feet apart? Um, Time to get a little closer here, folks. Some togetherness. So. Uh, not, of course, everyone should make sure to follow your doctor's guidelines and do everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also make your own decisions. Think for yourself. <laughs> um. Hmm. But yeah, it's been a long day. It's been a long week. And I've worked over 60 hours. Not fun. No, I guess that's a right, right at 60. Because they let us out 10 minutes <laughs> on Friday to make sure we got our shot. But, um,. Yeah. Oh. Is that what we're calling it, Masters? No. Masters. Masters, stop watching TikToks. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We are here. We are here. We are here. <laughs> yup. Um. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Right. Nice. Very nice. Oh.
I say the people on the podcast aren't going to hear that, so I might wait till later. But, um, yeah. Anything else you got for this uh, wonderful evening slash podcast, Mr. Masters? Alrighty. Well then, call it there and uh, you get some sleep and I'll get some sleep and just sleep in general. Sleep sounds good. I like sleep. Yep. Um, Alrighty. Well then, thank you everyone for watching, listening in, tuning in, whatever your per uh, preference is. Uh, please feel free to leave a like down below, leave a comment, subscribe, share this with your friends. That is, of course, how we grow. Uh, making sure that all the world is filled with an understanding that whatever podcast it is that they like, there is a worse one out there. It's us. Um, yes. Let everyone feel better about their preferred entertainment. That at least there is something of lower quality that they're listening to. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Should have tweeted it at him and been like, Bill, I have the I have the streak breaker right here for you. <laughs> like you could even send him one of the good ones and be like, Yeah, this is the streak breaker for you. <laughs> Which says a lot. Oh. Alrighty then. Thank you everyone. Sass especially for tuning in. We will see you all next time. Goodbye.